In August of 1994, Wizards of the Coast released the very first set of Magic the Gathering. Little did they know, this would lead to the creation of an entirely new genre of game, the trading card game. Over the last 28 years, Wizards has released 136 sets of Magic and counting. In this series, we'll revisit every single set of Magic the Gathering. We'll open one box or 24 packs of each set and add them to our collection. Then, we'll build a deck out of all the cards we've pulled throughout the entire history of the game and battle with them at the end of the episode. The winner will receive a prize to add to their collection. The loser will receive nothing. Every single week, the decks will get stronger and the strategies will get more and more complex. This is the Magic the Gathering progression series. And of course, I do need to give a big shout out to Simo for inspiring this series. All right. This week, we're doing Visions and Weatherlight. They are both small sets. They have 167 cards each, so we're not going to open a full box just because we'd be opening too many of the same cards. And also because we're trying to, tr kind of trying to get through these cards, like, kind of quickly to an extent, uh, getting through all these sets. So, with all that in mind, let's go ahead and start by going over these two sets and the interesting and good cards in the set. So, let's see. Is there anything, like, really interesting in white? Uh, hmm. Mana War is very good in blue. It's a 3 mana 2-2 two, two comes in, it bounces something. Very, very nice card. There's also Inspiration, 4 mana draw 2. One of the first draw spells outside of Ancestral Recall in Magic. So, you know, that's something. Also, Impulse, 2 mana, look at the top 4, choose 1, put the rest on the bottom, or shuffle them back in. I don't know if it still has that text or not. Uh, <laughs> actually, we can go ahead and check. Let me, let me check what Impulse does. It just loads. Uh, impulse. Now, just put the rest on the bottom in any order. So, the shuffling back in clause has just been removed. Prosperity is X blue. Each player draws X cards. There are ways to make a lot of mana at this point in the game. And if we get those cards, we might be able to play this as some sort of combo deck. Undo, three mana sorcery, bounce two target creatures. Pretty interesting. Going on to black. Hmm. Crypt Rats is a three mana one one. You can pay any amount of black mana to deal X damage to each creature and each player. That's a pretty good card. Necromancy, it's just three mana, uh, reanimates something. Basically, three mana animates it. We love to see that. Necrotol is a four mana, two, one, first strike. It fears some, or terrors when it enters the battlefield. You destroy target non black, non artifact creature. Pretty alright. Python's just a three mana, three, two. That's a creature. I don't know. That might be one of the better three drops in black right now. Vampiric is one mana. Search library for a card, shuffle, put that card on top, you lose two life. One mana instant, insane tutor, one of the best. Going on to red, fire blast is a six mana deal four damage to target creature or player or any target nowadays, including planeswalkers, but instead of paying six mana, you can actually just sacrifice two mountains, which is insane. One of the best cards in red ever. I don't think that's actually that hard to say. Also, Vyashino Sandstalker, three mana four two with haste. At the end of the turn, you bounce it back to your hand, basically a reusable, uh, Ball Lightning. We have Creeping Mold, 4 mana destroyed, Artifact, Land, or Enchantment. Kind of just a 4 mana Stone Rain with Upside. Might play that. Elephant Grass is pretty good. Cumulative Lucky, 1 black creatures cannot attack you. Non-black creatures can't attack you unless they pay 2 for each one. Good way to just, like, stall for a long time. Natural Order is an amazing card. 2 and 2 green, you have to sacrifice a green creature as additional cost. But these search library for a green creature, put it onto the battlefield. Just insane. Summer Bloom is also great. This is two mana. You may play three regional lands this turn. You probably remember this from like primetime decks. We might be able to build a deck around it at some point, but it's probably going to be a while. Also, we have Utabi Orangutan. Three mana, two, three, when it enters the battlefield, you destroy target artifact. Also, a pretty good card in some contexts. A lot of resources is pretty good. Black, green, sacrifice a land at two mana of any one color uh, that the land could produce. You play it as a mana source. Very, very strange card, but. You know, it's something. Those are some army ants. Uh, it's a 3 and a 1-1, one, one, but you can tap it and sacrifice a land to destroy target land. If we get this, we might try to go black back to, like, a black-red Ponza strategy with, like, all our sinkholes and stone rains and some army ants. Uh, that could be very annoying and very hard to get around. Ar artifact. So there's Helm of Awakening. This is a 2-mana artifact that makes all spells cost 1 less generic mana to play. 
weird how like <laughs> they basically come back to that wording on this card. That's funny. Uh, could be good in some type of pol uh, combos. First puzzle box. Very weird card. Basically, it's a four mana artifact, and at the beginning, uh, at the end of each player's draw phase, they like put their entire hand on the bottom of their deck and then draw that many cards. So like, as you you have to like throw your whole hand away to the bottom, draw that many cards, and then draw your card for turn. Which with cards like Narset is really annoying. You can just make it so your opponent can't do anything. On to the lands. We have the cruise. We have quicksand, which is okay. Kind of a removal spell as a land. Uh, Griffin Canyon, which is a card that goes with griffins, but there just aren't that many of those. On to Weatherlight. Uh, white, it has a lot of bad cards. Aura of Silence is actually pretty good. Artifacts and enchantments cost two more to play for your opponent, and you can sacrifice it to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Pretty good, like, anti-artifact and enchantment card for white. This is something we might sideboard. Blow it up when you really need to to stop something, or just keep it in play. If we think Pancake is on a deck like that. Peacekeeper is an, a ridiculous card. This costs two and a white. It's a 1-1 one, one creature. Uh, and you have to pay one and a white during your upkeep or it dies. But it makes it so that all creatures can't attack. This is insane. Very annoying. If we give this, we might go back onto our annoying uh, white do-nothing deck. We also have Serenity. Uh, there's a two-mana enchantment during your upkeep. You destroy all artifacts and enchantments, so they can't be regenerated. Pretty good, like, sideboard tech against those types of decks, along with, like, Aura of Silence. That gives us a few options. This is really better than Aura of Silence. Uh, Abduction uh, just steals a creature, untaps it, and when it when it dies, it goes back to its con original controller, uh, its owner. So, pretty okay control magic. Just an, uh, with control magic around, this probably won't be seeing play, just because it's, like... It's just okay. Disrupt is pretty interesting. One mana counter target instant or sorcery spell unless if they pay an additional one then you draw a card. Like, very annoying. This this is basically like a uh, a super strong like force spike for specific cards. Might be worth considering. Pendulum Mist, four mana enchantment at being each creature gains as being up you pay one or sacrifice this creature. Insane card. Sage is also pretty interesting in certain decks. One in a blue flying one in this battlefield. You go to the top four cards of your deck and put it back in any order. Just uh, fixes your top deck. And it's a two mana one flyer. Pretty good with like ninjas and stuff. Also pretty good with stuff like Bowls of Citadel. is an insane combo piece. But tons of stuff is good with that. There's also uh, Relearn. Just three mana return an uh, instant or sorcery card from a graveyard to your hand in blue. Just kind of a blue like grab something card. On to black we have some interesting cards. First off, Buried Alive. Three mana. Search your library. For three creatures and put them in your graveyard, then you shuffle your deck. Insane. We're three animator. Uh, once creatures get better, this card will be great. We would love to pull this. Doomsday, triple black. Pay half your life, round it up. Then you search your library and graveyard for five cards. Exile all the rest and then stack the five cards you chose in any way you want. Insane combo card. Uh, once stuff like Labman gets out, we will be trying to combo with this. If we pull it and we get like anything... Infernal Tribute's kind of weird. It's a 3-mana enchantment. It costs triple black, which is hard to pay. But you can pay 2 and sacrifice any, like, actual card. So anything that's not a token, basically, that you have on the battlefield, and then you draw a card. Pretty weird way to, like, just generate value, but it might be something we play if we get a lot of creatures with, like, death triggers at some point. Though, there also just might just be better cards for that strategy at that point. We'll see. Going on to red... Cone of Flame gets printed. This is a mech rate, but it deals one damage uh, to one target creature or player, so two damage to another one, three damage to yet another one. Goblin Grenade Years is kind of weird. Fervor comes around. This is a three-man enchantment that gives all your creatures haste. Pretty okay. Firestorm is weird. This is one red. You discard X cards, but then you deal X damage to each other to X targets. Uh, this can be uh, creatures, players, or planeswalkers. So, you want to discard a lot of cards, but you also have to have a lot of targets out for it to do anything. So, very weird card. Potentially extremely powerful, though. What does Heart of Bogarden do nowadays? That's very funny. So, uh, if you don't play, it's going to be with upkeep. It deals X damage to target player or planeswalker in each creature they control, where X is twice the number of H counters on it, minus 2. 
So two mana, then four mana, then six mana, and like whatever one in one you ended up playing paying last is basically how much damage it does. Easier to understand uh, with the old wording, but harder to like make rules for. I assume this might be a card we actually play uh, just to like, especially in like our like stone rain deck. If we play this and like get to four mana, we can just deal a ton of damage to Pancake. But there might be better cards for that too. I'll think about it. Love the Hounds, 4 mana, 4-4 four, four haste. When it comes into play, you take 4 damage. And like an aggro deck, we might consider playing that. Uh, no, that's not what we care about. Thunderbolt, 2 mana, 3 damage to a player, or 4 damage to a creature with flying. Pretty, pretty interesting. Definitely something we want to consider. Also, Thunderman, 6 mana, 5-5 five, five haste. When it, when it enters the battle, you tap all of the creatures. Uh, so they kind of have to take 5 damage. Interesting, we might consider it, but it is pretty expensive and not that great, in all honesty. Going on to green, is there anything we really, like, super care about? Kaya's Blessing is a good tech card against mill decks. Nature's Resurgence could potentially be extremely interesting. 4 mana, sorcery, each player draws card equal to the number of creature cards in their graveyard. Extremely weird card. Could be very good, though. Veteran Explorer is something we'll care about a long time from now. So one mana, one one. When it dies, each player searches their deck for two basic lands and puts them onto the battlefield. Not good right now because we're both going to be playing a lot of basics. However, in the far future, Nick Fit will be a thing, and this is something that we might consider. There's also Vitalize, which is one mana instant on top of all your creatures. With... If we get a bunch of mana elves, which we can kind of get at this point. We already have quite a few. We have, like, two copies of Lana World, so we have eight. This can make a ton of mana. Might not be something we're actually wanting to play right now. Artifacts. Mindstone's very good. You can tap it for a, a colorless mana, or you pay one and tap it. And sacrifice it to draw a card. Very good, like, ramp spell draw uh, cycle. Null Rod's also great. Uh, basically... Activated abilities of artifacts can't be activated. Super good. Very good against, like, all of Pancake's, like, artifact ramp. If we get a bunch of these, we might just stop playing our own artifact ramp and start playing this to punish Pancake. And the land slot. We actually have some more interesting lands this time around. Lotus Veil. You have to sacrifice two untapped lands or uh, sacrifice it as enters the battlefield. And you can tap it to add 3 mana of any one color. Scorch Rune does the same thing, but adds 4 colorless. And Gemstone Mine enters battle with 3 mining counters. You can tap it or remove a mining counter to add 1 mana of any color. Very good, like, mana fixing card for combo decks. Now, with all that said, we've been going for a little while. Let's go ahead and open our packs already. We're going to do 16 packs, which is half a box of each set. Let's go. We found a Man of War and a Crypt Rats already. That's pretty good. Undo is okay. So this is Ring is something we might consider playing at some point. It's just a colorless ramp. Dream Tides is... A pretty interesting card that we might actually play. We do find a Fire Blast. We want as many of these as possible. It's one of the best cards in this set. Necrotol as well. That's great. We love that. Another undo. Find a crew. Heat wave is potentially interesting. Final prosperity. A second fire blast. That's great. Another necrotol as well. We're pretty early in these uh, openings, so. That's pretty good. This Inspiration, I think, uh, is a card that Pancake's going to get a lot of mileage out of. We've already found a lot. We found an Impulse as well. That's great. Another Mana War. There are a lot of good blue cards in this set. Which I'm not necessarily stoked about. Because we are not going to be the ones playing them. Looks like we might be whiffing on our playset of uh, Fire Blast. We only got two so far. We do find a puzzle box. There's our third fire blast. Three's good enough, honestly. So we do want the fourth one. We only have a few packs left, but 
I'm happy with three. Ooh. Oh, man, this isn't that great because of that spacing. But it is good against Flyers, which is something we are worried about. Played a Sandstalker. We might actually play that. Don't think we found anything that we super wanted. Also think we whiffed on all our Fire Ants, unfortunately. Which sucks, because that's a card we kind of wanted. Oh, well. Let's go ahead. Nothing so far. Flux is a potentially good card for combo decks, depending on what exactly you're playing. There's a Sage Owl. A gemstone Mine. Not at all upset to see that. We do find a Thunderbolt. Also, Haunting Misery is a card we might get Smilage out, out, out of at some point. Uh, you exile X creature cards in your graveyard and you'll X damage a target player. Once we get to, like, Dredge as a mechanic, this might be a card we start playing. If we just really need some more pass. We've got another Gemstone Mines, which will be good at some point. There's a Lotus Veil as well. I don't think we have any way... Ooh, there's a Null Rod. That's great. I'm very happy. About seeing that. Found a Thundermare and an Aura of Silence. Another Lotus Veil, eh? Uh, we might be able to play some sort of, like... Uh, there are, like, Lotus Field combo decks in the future that play a lot of, like, untappers. If we get enough of those cards at some point, we might be able to play some sort of combo deck with Lotus Fail. Now that we have some of those, especially when Lotus Field comes around and we have multiple versions of it in our card pool, that could be a very good deck. Find a Mind Stone. That's not bad. Another Thunderbolt. Also, a Sage, a Disrupt Mind Stone. And a Necrotog, it's been really interesting. You exile the top creature card in your graveyard to give a plus two, plus two until end of turn. Also a card we might play in like Dredge or something as just a big beater. We don't really have ways to fill up our graveyard right now, is the thing. So, all these cards that care about that are kind of bad for right now. But, it's something that's worth keeping in mind. This was a rare. <laughs> Man, early magic. I'll never understand you. Scorched Ruins. That's a card we could play. Well, we definitely got some good cards. Not everything we would want, but uh, I think we found like three Fire Blasts, so that's at least good. All right, so pretty pretty close games last week with that. Uh, Recall is now banned, which sucks, but like it was going to get banned pretty fast. Uh, as well as... A lot of my other stuff was going to start getting hit. But this week we're opening visions on Weatherlight. We're starting to get to the... We're, getting, we're, we're finally getting to the era where there's just a lot more playable cards. And a lot less cute garbage. For lack of a better word. Um, so we're opening 18 packs of each. And... Hopefully we're going to get some Vamp Tutors. Uh, Vamp Tutors going to be super useful down the road. Because we're really we're getting close to Earth's block, and this is going to be big blue combo decks. So, if we can last until then with some good tutors, we'll have uh, some good stuff to do. Okay, so we're going to open eighteen packs of each. I start with visions. Okay. Fire blast is also going to be a big one from this Corian Ranger. It's going to be important eventually for. Uh, combo uh, uh, creature combo decks. Fire blast is gonna make red aggro ungodly. It's a common. Is your mana creature interesting? Is just an early game blocker that I can play and keep mana up. Sis's ring is gonna make big brown better. And Armand is interesting, but not gonna be super good. Vanishing might be good clutch. Removal. Come of Awakening is going to be interesting. Uh, if we play a big brown deck, that's going to be very good. Another Corian Ranger is nice. Firestorm, okay. 
Teferi's puzzle box is interesting. Not going to be good, but that's going to be something I want to keep an eye on. Mana War. This is one of the things we really want. It's a 3 mana 2 2 that tempos our opponent. Uh, that's what this deck needs. That's what my deck needs. We also have Necrotol. It's going to be super big and important. Uh, it's going to make playing my artifact blockers a lot more valuable. Undo. A good way to tempo out. Inspiration's not great, but it's straw that I'll probably end up running. Mana War Impulse. Impulse is super big. It's not card advantage, but it is really good card selection. Looking for like one Vape Tutor. Yes, there we go. Vape Tutor. Okay. Creeping Mold's going to be good land destruction card eventually. There's three Rangers. Three Rings. Prosperity. Good. We want some prosperities because we can try to build Cadaverous Bloom. Uh, or Prosperous Bloom combo deck. Desertion. Really expensive counterspell, but it steals something. Fire Blast. Funeral Charm is going to be good. We're playing like a black gold deck. We want that. Inspiration. Corrosion is interesting. Corrosion is really interesting. It's a really good, really good sideboard card against artifact metas if they're slow. End of war, nice. Another impulse. I, I want more impulses. Um, Necro, another Necrotol. Mineral charm. Two vamp tutors. Oh my god, that's that's insane. Um, okay. Uh, not as many impulses I want, but got a good number of mana wars. Two vamp tutors is going to be insane. Um, that's going to make combo decks super, super scary. So then we're going to go open our White Light packs. White Light also has some good cards. Uh, Gemstone Caverns is good fixing for combo. And then... Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I didn't... Whatever. Um... Okay, Mindstone, really good. Mindstone, Ophidian is interesting. Null Rod, Null Rod is going to be a very, very sweet card in a lot of games potentially. Peace Heaper is going to be good. Sadly, Lotus Fails is not really going to do anything unlike what it did in the time it actually came out because we are playing with modern rules, so this doesn't allow you to tap it before you sacrifice it. I don't know how much we lift on that. I'm happy taking Mind Stones though. Mind Stones good. I uh I like it. Some couple oddball cards here and there. But for the most part nothing super exciting. Alright everyone, here's the deck we're playing this week. I went ahead and just didn't do a sideboard because we're already mainboarding our sideboard because uh, I'm guessing that Pancake is just going to keep playing blue because they have a ton of great blue cards. It, it's what makes the most sense to me. Maybe I'll get wrecked by that, but I think it's an okay guess. Now, what we're playing this week is Ponza. We have four Sinkholes, four Stone Ranks, two Black Destroy Target Land, uh... Two and a red destroy target land. We have a pillage, one and a red destroy target artifact for land. We have a choking stance, one and two black. Destroy target non swamp. If it was not basic, it deals two damage to its controller. And we have two copies of Blight. Two mana aura, enchant land. When it becomes tapped, you destroy it. We have two army ants, three mana one one. Tap, sack of land, destroy target land. Altogether, this puts us at 14 land destruction cards, which is a lot. So we should draw. A good number of them every game. Outside of that, we have some more disruptive cards. We have Oubliette, which is just removal. We have Red and Elemental Blast and Pyroblast to counter red. We have Necrotol, which is just removal on a creature. We have Hypnotic Spectre, which makes an opponent discard a random card if it hits them. We also have Mind Twist and Hymnatorak to get more cards out of our opponent's hands. We have Demonic Tutor to find good cards out of our deck. So with all these cards, we're trying to attack the hand and make it so that they have the worst cards in their hand overall. As well as restrict access to mana. And then we have a bunch of beaters to try and win the game. 
Central is a 3 mana 2 2. It is a 3 3. If we have a swamp, we can play a block to regenerate it. Pretty okay. Skulking Ghost is a 2 mana 2 1 flying with the illusion ability. If it becomes the target of a spell or ability, you sacrifice it. Fledgling Jin is a 2 mana 2 2 with flying that deals 1 damage to us during our upkeep. And Orange is a 5 mana 6 6 with trample and it can't attack or block if your opponent has a creature of power 3 or greater. Basically. A bit more complex, but that's what it does. So, our plan is to cast as many Stone Rain effects as possible. Uh, hopefully draw some of our fast mana, slam an org early, and then just win the game. There's a chance we get wrecked, but I think this is a pretty competent deck. Mostly just because we have so many stupid land destruction cards. Like, we have an overabundance of them, which is going to make this deck do its thing pretty much every time. Okay, so this is my deck list for this week. The idea here is I'm expecting Pumpkin to be playing around me playing Heavy Blue. Because my blue pools have been so good and I've been doing so good with blue, last week, last week we saw Pumpkin was playing 8 main board, Elemental Blasts, and Pyro Blasts. So I'm basically trying to meta play around that, trying to go for effectively mono black, splashing blue for some card draw. And the idea here is that even though my black pool may be a little lower power level across the board, because I don't have some of the power nine to support it, and I don't have you know, the counter spells and the tutors and stuff that I have access to in blue, splashing black, I can potentially catch them off guard with a lot of dead cards main board, and also just not knowing what to play around. So, a big change this week. Some important cards I'm pulling in. No Rod. I got one copy of No Rod in the sideboard. It's going to be potentially really big coming up with artifact decks. It's going to shut off Mox and Soul Ring, stuff like that. Uh, if I bring it in, I'm probably cutting Ices. But, you know, Shield Spears, it's a blocker. It's zero mana. It keeps me alive. We got some Terrors in case uh, we just need removal that hits things. Necrotal big card now. Assuming the fact that Punk might play Necrotol, this basically makes Necrotol a dead card for them. It's a 4-mana 2-2. Uh, Fountain of Youth is one of our only ways to do repeatable life gain or just life gain in general. Abyssal Gatekeeper is a 2-mana 1-1, one, one, but when it dies, each player sacks a creature. It's a slow edict effect. Uh, in the main board, we have 4 Sinkhole, 2 him the Turox. He has some him. Infernal Contracts is just desperation card draw. It's 3 black mana, draw 4 cards. Lose half your life, round it up. If we can infernal contract into potentially something like a decent sized drain life, you know, we can recover some of that life, maybe kill a creature, um, stabilize a bit. Hellfire, it does damage to us, but it kills all non black creatures. It's basically the only board ripe aside from Wrath of God that exists in Nev Disc. Um, one DT, we got two Vamp Tutor, does a lot of damage to us. Being able to just get a lot of our cards that are effectively one ofs is going to be big. You know, we can get our hippies and our graders and our shades, if there's white, uh, we can tutor for null rods, we can tutor for a wrath. Um, you know, it, it's just flexibility. Inspiration is our one blue card. It draws two cards for four mana instant speed. It's one blue pip. We don't need it to light game, so we have some turns to find some blue mana. Uh, and with our one duel and two fetch lands, it's not that hard to run. A dark ritual lets us to you know power out a turn one hippie, uh, maybe a turn one sinkhole followed by a vamp tutor. Uh, you have three contagion. It's pitch a black card, remove some things, make them weaker. Good black creatures got two order they have in hand and one knight of strong gold. Basically the same card, just different names. Uh, Krovik and horror. It's a four mana two two, but it recursive, so um, potentially just keeps coming back. Don't know how good it's going to be, but it, we'll try it out. It's just one of the black creatures we can play that does stuff. Um, five mana, five five for six protection from white. It's just a decent statted body. Hippies, if we can turn one hippie, that should, that can just end games. Air Raiders, two mana, two three. We're going to keep swinging with it. Uh, Pumbaji witches kills mana dorks, pings our opponent down, makes combat a little harder for our opponent. Uh, two soul ring, one mock sapphire. Also lets us cast Inspiration. Three IC Manipulators, just a way to slow the game down. Uh, maybe shut off some key stuff. And this is the deck list for this week, so we're going to see how it plays out, and hopefully I can 
get some meta meta victory points by catching Funkman off guard. Oh wait, first let's roll die. I rolled a five. Uh, I think this is the first time you've gone first in one of these games in quite a while. Actually, you keep getting bad luck. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely been hard. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I'll keep this hand. It's not great, actually, but. Um. Yeah, I'll take this. It's. Yeah. By the way, I checked. I pulled like one version of each of the slow fetches, except for the black red one. I think. <laughs> like my. I got barely any, but the ones I got were pretty good for what I tend to be playing. Yeah, I mean, like, it's just. I just bring that up to say that my uh, my luck on getting freaking mana fixing lands has been extremely bad. Uh, I've got some other good lands and stuff. It's just my mana fixing is hurting a lot, which really sucks. M means I have to have to play a lot of Mark Ward hands. But uh, yeah, I'm keeping my if, hand. Uh, if I try to go outside Grixis or Esper card co like color combo specifically, it gets real bad. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna lead on a swamp. And a mock sapphire. Okay. And then we're gonna tap those to cast some for Gripper. Okay. And then we're gonna enter. Oh, All right. it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Uh, draw a card. That's a good draw. Swamp Soul Ring. And yep. nothing for two. So back to you. And swamp for two. I'll take two. End turn. Go to my turn, I'll untap, upkeep, draw. Oh, that's a card. Uh, I think... Yeah. Uh, Army Ants? Ooh, that's... Um, Sorry. I feel really... No, no, it resolves. Okay. I'm gonna go but to my end step. I feel really bad for you, um, because we are going to... Cast a contagion, pitching a sinkhole, targeting the army ants. All right, it's dead. Uh, you say that as if I didn't just get a two for one there, but you know, I'll keep draw. Ooh, okay, we're gonna crack Bad River. We're gonna get a underground sea. Yep. Shuffle walls. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Just shuffle that again. Let's put a swamp into play. Cast a sinkhole targeting swamp. The swamp? Yep. Okay. Go to combat. Swing with Earth Raiders. 16. Yep. And investor. Good my turn. What? That's not right. Uh, give me a second. Did I? Oh, I accidentally put a second copy of a card in my deck that I didn't have access to. Oops. If you want to just uh, exile and draw another card, we'll try to fix it inside. Yeah, I, I just double clicked on that on accident. <laughs> okay. Is what happened. <laughs> so Oh another soul ring. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh that's not that's not correct. Uh alright. Well this isn't the best. We're just gonna have to pass turn. Swamp baby right, we're gonna cast a a knight of Shrumgold. Okay. And then swing in with our graders. Twelve uh fourteen. And step Go to my turn. I'll untap. I'll keep draw. That's a card that I drew. Um, not yet. Uh, sinkhole underground sea. Yep. Well, in turn. Ooh. Okay. That's a good one. Order of the Ebon Hands. Yep. Go to combat. Some of the graders and knight. Go to ten. End phase. Go to my turn. Draw. Okay, that's a card. Uh, Oubliette? Yep. Uh, we'll target Knight of the Ebon Hand. 
or Knight of Stormgold, sorry. I combined two of your cards. <laughs> All right, I will. All right, we're gonna end turn. Want baby? Actually, don't hold. Attack. Go to six. Uh, four damage. I'm gonna pump order twice. Go to four. And then end turn. Go to my turn. Attack. All right, we're gonna have to go to game two. Uh, all right, I'll choose to go first. We're gonna mull again. Yeah, I cannot keep that. We'll keep this. Yeah, guess I'll keep this. Put a. Oh man, I really wish I had drawn or pulled any mana fixing at all. All my decks would be so much better if I could play dual lands of any kind. Yeah, I, I it really hurt with Ice Age because I was like, oh, there's no way we're not gonna get. I'm not gonna get at least a couple decent duels. But then I pulled like I think like one one land from Ice Age, and I was like, it's not even playable. Yeah. The nice thing is that the next couple core sets have those lands reprinted in them, so we're going to be picking up fixing pretty consistently. Yeah. Uh, are you keeping your hand? Yeah, I'm keeping this hand. All right. Swamp pass. Swamp pass. Go to my turn. That's a card. Uh, sinkhole. Uh, in response, we're going to cast a vamp tutor. Okay. And does it does it sink or? Yeah, it, it does. I'm just trying to figure out right. how this resolves. I think I did that right. I guess that technically goes. This oh, way. sorry. I pressed the pass turn button. Anyway, it's your turn. Oh, I hit the button too. <laughs> okay, no, no. <laughs> All right. There we go. We've okay. done it right. I think I did it right. There we go. Okay, swamp and turn. Let's go to my turn. Yep. Draw. That's a card. Uh, let's play a mountain. Let's tap two for a skulking ghost. Will it resolve? Okay. We're gonna in turn. It's a beater. Swamp. We're gonna sinkhole the mountain. Okay. Master. Let's go to my turn. I'll untap, upkeep, draw. That's a card. Play a mountain. Go to combat a two. Take two. In my turn. Nice. Uh, we're gonna cast a hippie. Okay. And then pass turn. Right. Let's go to my turn. <laughs> Untap, upkeep, draw. Mountain. Pillage a swamp. Uh, we're gonna in turn. It's interesting. Why would I swing in? I don't want to lose a card out of my hand. Like, no, I, I didn't realize it flew. Um, oh yeah, it does. It's a two-one so flying gonna... with downside because a two-minute two-one flyer. Oh, that's way too good. So we're gonna exile Hellfire, pay one life, cast Contagion, targeting Skulking Ghost. All right, it'll die to its own ability. All right, and then I'll swing in for a two. I'll take two. Roll a dice. Okay. Roll a two. Uh, so that actually doesn't help. Uh, <laughs> it, it's two. One, it, two. It, it landed as tails. Tails two. So I guess that'll be second card. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my turn. Untap. I like how. I like how when you said roll die, it's like you actually you mean a coin. No, I said a die. <laughs> <laughs> right. I need another result here. We're gonna end the turn. Let's draw. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we're gonna sinkhole a swamp. Okay. And then swing for two. All right. Take two. Then in face. Uh, left or right? Ah, I keep forgetting about this. I'm used to playing hippie on arena where it just resolves. I don't know. It's a one. one. Oh. Yep. All right. Okay, that's a pretty terrible card. We're going to pass. We're going to cast Water of the Evan Hands. 
Okay. So you move for two with Hippie. Take it. Uh, two. Pyroblast. I tap, upkeep, draw. Oh my god, yeah. I do another red elemental blast. I can't draw anything. I actually pretty much lost that game because of my mana fixing being bad. If I had pillaged a turn earlier, the entire game would have played out differently. But yeah, oh, it's so fucking aggravating. To be fair, that they just I, didn't I, print any lands at this point in the game. Yeah. To be fair, I did metagame really hard about you running pyroblast to elemental well, blast. I, I have to still. Like it's not. It's not <laughs> no, an no. option. Like no, no. Here's the thing. Do you know what the one blue card of my deck is? Probably. Three copies of Inspiration. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing mono blue splash inspiration for a card for draw. Black, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, also mono. it's also really shit because uh this was still the time when Wizards was giving black like the dumbest removal. So I have Necroton in my deck, which just doesn't do anything for no yep. reason. Because that, black that, that was Yeah, black couldn't kill black for whatever reason. Well, it, I, I, I mean, it's supposed to be a flavor thing, but, like, it just... Yeah, there's just tons of, like, really, really bad, like, really dumb decisions. So, my entire deck was uh, Stone Rain, Sinkhole, Choking Sands. I drew Choking Sands game one, uh, and you only had Swamps in play, so that was also really fun. Uh, two Blights, uh, Army Ants. So, I'm Ooh. just on, like, 16 land destruction I... spells. And I straight up almost ran this deck. I legitimately almost ran this deck. <laughs> um, but I was like, I was like, I don't want to run off color. I want to try to just run lean, efficient, mono color. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I have to be on black red for this. And, yeah, like, first off, drawing Choking Sands as my only, like, real land destruction spell game one was, like, catastrophically bad luck. It, it was, yeah. like... It was pretty bad. And also, like, just not being able to actually cast my spells the way I wanted to because the mana fixing is just so fucking bad at this it point. Is. It is so, so annoying. Like, it's good if you can actually get the cards that exist, but, like, they don't they haven't printed enough of anything yet. Like, it's just... And my yeah, luck has been just legendarily all, ass. It's all higher rarity than it should be for a lot of it. So, like... There's just not low. There's not low rarity fixing. Even like even like a prismatic prism at this point in the game would be so groundbreaking. Uh, prophetic prism, a, like the two mana draw card. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I would probably be playing that card if I had yeah, access it, to it. Yeah, because it cantrips. It's two mana. That's cheap enough. The closest is the best fixing I think right now is a three mana non cantripping prophetic prism. Yeah. It filters one to one any color. But I think that just got printed, and before that, the best thing was that, but it cost two mana to get one of any color. Oh, yeah. I Like, if you have all the Abu duels, things are pretty good, but, yeah. like, I don't think either of us got very lucky pulling them. Uh, it, it's... Um, I, I didn't get too bad with that. I think, I think the bigger thing is you can get by with lesser duels, but you have to get enough of the tap fe fetch lands. Because with enough of those, because they're lower rarity, you can kind of get around. Oh, like, I, I'm playing a, all, I'm playing a flood plane because it gets underground sea. Yeah, like um, I, I the only duels that I pulled were two copies of Savannah, and I'm never playing green white because uh, my pool for white is incredibly shallow because white has like five good cards at this point. In the yeah, like, white has really good cards, but they're really disparity quality. Like so you, a you lot have, of your you life. have bad creatures a bunch of bad uh life gain spells then you have its good cards which are like its removal uh in the forms of like source of plowshares wrath of god balance um a few really good like stacks effects like moat and whatnot and then you have like savannah lines which i didn't pull up any like yeah because uh, it's a rare for some reason yeah and like green green got off a lot a lot better just because like wild growth and lenora elves and stuff were so cheap uh, and so, like, readily available. So, like, even though you're casting Crawl Worm, like, because it's in green, Crawl Worm is a much better card. Like, yeah. just by default. And its stats are just kind of better than a lot of other creatures for the same cost. Like, one of the best statted black creatures I have is a 6-mana 5-5, five five, but it's legendary. 
and its ability is protection from white. Yeah, like <laughs> that's not a great card, but that's just how bad the creatures are. That a six mana five five is like this could just take over the game because it can swing through pretty much most sports. Yeah, without contest. So I think I think the ban for this week is and just so that I can finally be off fucking Pyroblast or Elemental Blast all the time in the main board because I kind of have to uh, because of your blue pools. I think it's going to be tie block. Like, th this was a pretty fair game. I just uh, had some bad luck. I also uh, metagamed yeah. wrong. So that was... You were just kind of a step ahead of me there. So I, I think this might have been a more winnable matchup had I built my deck uh, a little bit better for non-blue yeah. decks. Because yeah, the thing is, like, I was banking on the fact of hoping that you were going to try to meta against blue a lot. But if you didn't meta against blue, I think my deck is a lot weaker. Yeah, um, I mean... But I like, also built back that I know you play a lot of black, and a lot of the black removal doesn't kill black stuff. Yeah. So, like, Terror, Terror Necrotal... Um, I, th I think Dark Banishing can destroy non-artifact creatures... So I think Dark Banishing is like a three mana instant destroy target non artifact creature. I think it's either non artifact or non black. I can't remember which one, but it can kill stuff that Terror can't for three mana. Uh, I can't quite remember uh, exactly what it is. I'd have to let me go ahead and check real quick. But yeah, I, I think I think I'm just it's non black unfortunately, which is so still stupid, but. Yeah. Also, honestly, I think Contagion is just, like, it's deceptively good in this environment. Yeah, it, um, it's still a good card. What is it? It Two negative two one counters. Yeah, yeah like, there are... Creatures are still really small. A lot of the best creatures are things like Order of the Ebon Hand, unironically, mm -hmm. which is a card I'd be playing if I were on a more... Actually, I yep. think I might be playing some number of... Uh, I, I think it's just one of the best black creatures, I think, so you're probably playing some of them. No, I, I, uh, my, my creatures are like Necrotal, which is one toughness, Skulking Ghost, which dies to its own ability. I had a Fledgling Jin, which is a actually a no, ne pretty good card. Necrotal, Necrotal's a 2-2, two -two, but... No, it's not. It's... Is it not? It's I a 2-1. Necrot <laughs> it's a fucking 2-1. <laughs> because of course it is. Choop Choop, uh, Ravenous Chupacabra is a 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> okay, I guess it has first strike. Yeah, so, like, that, okay. it's still that, it's still pretty decent. Like it beats a lot of two and three mana creatures in yeah. combat still, and it it's a two for one. So I mean, it's still a fine card. It's just and, and the thing is, even if it doesn't kill the creature, it now has two less power, which means with that with the minus one toughness reduction, I can you can probably just swing through a lot of stuff because like your blocks are either really bad or. You just straight up like, can't kill my things. Yeah, but if, but if my board is like Fledgling Jin, Necrotal, uh, a like Contagion onto each of them, like that kills Necrotal, Fledgling Jin now is zero power. It's basically dead, right? Like you have to have three power creatures for them to literally do anything in combat it, uh, after a Contagion resolves. So, and there just aren't that many outside of like a few green creatures at this point. There are not. Oh, can I get to my. There we go. Let me get to my sideboard. I'm gonna show you some of my spicy sideboard cards. Oh, I actually can't remember. Have I have I said what I was banning yet? Because I, I was trying to get to that, but we you got said time. I think, you, I think you said time walk. Yeah, uh, th that is definitely the thing. Just because it's gonna like that 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 kind of op like there's still a lot of busted cards that are playing like fucking soul rings and whatnot. Those are all still really annoying, but they aren't as bad. Why are you playing Fountain of Youth? This card's ass. It's would it because in the event that you're playing something burn, it's the only life gain I have access to. Um, See, it's I might gonna... reasonably cost it. it. My goal is it's a zero mana card. If I'm getting burnt out, I can hopefully gain just enough life to stabilize. I I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think this is it, Chief. Uh, no, it's, it's <laughs> probably not. But I didn't know what else to put, and I was like, it might help me. But I was playing a, a side, a set of shield spears in the side as anti aggro tech. Um, yeah, I, abyssal gatekeepers, an edict on legs. I got one null rod, which good old reserve list card. Yeah, N null rod's pretty strong. Um, I could definitely see playing it. I I'm also kind of waiting on the colorless pool to get deeper because I have 
I have multiple, I think, Workshop is the one, the Tap for Three for Artifacts. Oh, yeah. I have two of those, and I have uh, four copies of everything, of both of the Tron lands besides Tower, and two copies of Tower. So, like, my my big, dumb, uh, colorless package is actually, like, th as far as the lands go, it's pretty all right. I could definitely build yeah, a... Yeah, and th there's some decent-ish creatures right now. Um, like Juggernaut still is a decent creature. Yeah. It's it's hitting for a lot of damage. There's some like solidly costed. I think there's like a six mana four six, mm -hmm. which like there's a decent enough creatures. So like that pool getting bigger is definitely gonna do a lot because turboing out a dude really fast is just gonna do a lot, especially with a lot of removal and not being able to artifact creatures. I, I really think we're just a few sets away from me being able to play that, because the issue isn't that there aren't good cards for it, the issue is that there aren't enough cards like Juggernaut to play, right? Like, it's just, it, it, I just need enough to build a 60 card deck, is the thing, you know? Yeah, it, it, it's the problem I had with Blue, where I didn't have a critical mass of just stuff to have a deck that does stuff, Yeah. and then once you hit that critical mass, you're just gonna, like, go insane.